the message today, and it's found in Exodus chapter 3. And I want to read verse 11 down to verse 14. And I would challenge you to read the entire book of Exodus, uh, particularly the entire book of Exodus chapter 3, to give you more context. We don't have the time to really dissect and uh, speak about the entire uh, chapter and take it verse by verse. But I do want to share some things that I believe that the Holy Spirit has imparted into my spirit and I just want to release it into this atmosphere today. I do want to tell you that even if you have been to this church over a thousand times, that you are not here by coincidence. I also want to tell you that if you are here for the first time, that you are not here by coincidence, that God by his, by his divine providence has orchestrated your steps and he has ordered your steps into this place today. And even if you are watching us over the internet, I want you to understand that you are not listening here today at this service and this message by coincidence. God has an assignment on your life. There's a word that is coming into your heart today and God has some things that he still wants to do in your life. There are some things he still plans to do for you and there are some things he still plans to do through you and that's why you've got to get ready for what's coming. Are you listening to me? In the book of Exodus chapter three, if you have it, say I have it. Beginning at verse 11, the scripture reads, and Moses said unto God, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he, and he said, certainly I will be with thee and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Can we say amen for the reading of the word? Please remain standing. I want to pray with you just for a brief moment uh, before we share the word of the Lord. Father, we come before you with hearts filled with praise and adoration for who you are. We thank you for this opportunity we have to open up the scriptures, to gain and to glean the revelation that you have for us in this place today. Consume my heart and my mind and my spirit that you might have free reign in this atmosphere today. Declare your word definitively in this house today. Set the captives free. Send an anointing that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden. We will give you the glory, the praise, and an honor for all that you will do. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk to you today from the simple subject, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. I know this subject alone can create some question uh, in many people's hearts and minds, even within the realm of Christianity, because what we have often been taught is that we should believe in God, and that is true, or that we should believe in Jesus or believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, and uh, I subscribe to that belief as well. But I want you to understand my brothers and sisters, that whatever God is going to do in your life and whatever he has planned to do through you, you must also bring yourself to a place where you believe in yourself. Not in the sense of deifying yourself, 
not in the sense of making yourself out to be God, but believing in yourself in the sense that if God has called you and if God has chosen you for a particular thing, then you must believe that you are the one. You must believe that you are the man for the job. You must believe that you are the woman for the job or that you are the teenager or the child for the job. Because if God has called you to do a particular thing, he has not made a mistake. If he has whispered your name, if he has called you out of the ashes and out of the dungeons of life to do a particular thing for him and for his kingdom, he knows exactly what he is doing. And if he has called you and chosen you and pulled you out of the crowd, it is important that you understand that you, know, you can no longer afford to vacillate and be torn betwixt and between two opinions as to what God has called you to do. You must realize that, that when God calls you to do a thing, he called you before you ever heeded to the call. He called you before you were born, as you have heard me say in weeks past. He called you with a specific purpose and a specific reason in mind. And I believe that the Holy Spirit has sent me into this place today to deliver this message because I want you to understand that even those of you that know that you have been called, I want you to realize that God is even calling you right now in a new and fresh way. And it's important for you to begin to muster up the confidence, not only just in God or the power of the Holy Spirit, but even within yourself in understanding that God wants to partner with you, that God wants to bring you into alignment with him so that he can release his greatest stuff through your life. I'm telling you, God is calling every person in this room, whether you're male, female, young, or old, I don't care what stage you are in your life. Your life is not over. And God still has some things that he wants to do through you. There is still an anointing that awaits your life. There is still wisdom and knowledge and wisdom that God wants to download into your spirit to move your life into a dimension that you have never known. This is why I came here today to tell you that you are not in this place by coincidence, that you are not hearing this message today or maybe you'll hear it uh, sometime later in the week for those who are watching it over the internet. You are not hearing this message today just because you happen to come to church on Sunday. You are hearing this message today because God is calling your name. God and all of his kingdom is calling you because this world is going through a transition. This world is going through a transformation. Everything that you see, everything that you are aware of as it relates to this world, it is going through a metamorphosis. It is going through a change. I don't care if you're talking about politics or business or education or even religion. God is allowing everything to go through a paradigm shift. And he is working in the hearts of those that will work with him to bring about a radical shift into the world. And that's why he is calling you. That's why he has, he has assigned something for your life. As we look at the book of Exodus chapter three, in its context, this is nothing but a call from God. God is calling Moses the prophet. Moses is the one that God is getting ready to use to, and to raise up to liberate the children of Israel from the house of Pharaoh and out of the captivity of the Egyptians. You must understand that the children of Israel had been enslaved for over 400 years. They had been in captivity by the Egyptians for over 400 years and they began to cry out unto God. They began to pray. They began to seek the face of God. They wanted change. They wanted deliverance. 
They wanted the chains and the shackles to be broken off of their lives. And God heard their cry. I just want to tell somebody in here today, I don't know what you've been going through and I don't know what heartaches and what pains you have experienced, but, but you have been praying and you have been seeking God and God brought you to this place to let you know he's heard your cry. He, he's been seeing you pray when nobody else is around. He, he's been seeing and watching the tears that have fallen out of your eyes. He has heard your cry. He's heard your groan, your moan. He's, he's in tune with the frustrations of your life. And God is getting ready to send a deliverer. He's getting ready to send the answer. He's getting ready to send everything that you've been standing in need of because I want you to understand your desperate cry has gotten the attention of God. It's gotten the attention of all of heaven. I want somebody in here to know that if when you are a child of God and you begin to call upon him, he will answer. He will shake heaven and earth to bring you the answer that you need. He'll send answers huh, even through his angelics, his angelic assistance if he needs to. He'll send hell, he'll send fire, he'll send whatever you need to deliver you because he is in tune with his people. God's calling you, he is calling you and in this particular passage of scripture, God has called Moses to be the liberator, to be the deliverer of the entire household of Israel. I want you to understand my brothers and sisters that when God calls you, when he pulls you out of the, a group of people, when he pulls you away from a crowd of people, I want you to understand that your calling is an answer. Your calling is an answer. If, if I were you, I would write that down. Your calling is an answer. God called Moses because the children of Israel needed an answer. The children of Israel needed to be delivered. They needed to be set free. And I want you to know anytime you can discern a calling on your life, it is because there is a problem somewhere. There's a dilemma, there's a crisis, there's a traumatic situation that may be taking place in somebody else's life and God is anointing you to go in there to deliver the answer. Are you listening to me? When there is a calling, I know you may be hearing this for the first time, but every time God causes, calls a man or a woman, he is calling you to resolve a problem, to fix an issue, to bring correction into a situation, or in this case, to bring deliverance. When God calls you, he's getting ready to send you in with power. He is getting ready to send you in with kingdom authority and kingdom dominion because something has to change in that situation you were in. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want you to understand that you are an answer for somebody else's problem. There may be a problem in somebody's family. There may be a problem in somebody's city. There may be a problem in somebody's country. There may be problems in the nations of the world. And when God gets ready to bring an answer, he starts calling individuals that he has predestined to walk in his power and his glory. And he is sending you in as an answer and to bring the solution to the equation. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I need you to touch your neighbor and tell them I am an answer. I am an answer. I am an answer. I'm not just here in this world just to be here. I am an answer. God has put some things in my intellect. God has put some things in my spirit. God has put some things in the embodiment of who I am and he is getting ready to send me into some family crisis. He is getting ready to send me into some financial situation. He is getting ready to send somebody into politics or education and you're getting ready to bring answers to whatever is going on in that situation. 
God doesn't call a man or a woman if there is not anything wrong going on. If there are no problems, if there are no issues, why would he call me? Why would he set me apart if I were not being sent in to bring in the aid or the assistance that is required? I want you to see your calling as a calling to bring solutions, a calling to bring deliverance into that situation, which also uh, brings me uh, to the point that when God calls a man or a woman as an answer, you must understand that when he brings the answer, it usually comes in the form of a person, that God is a spirit meaning that he is invisible. So when he gets ready to send an answer, when he gets ready to send a solution, he usually sends it through the legs and the mouths and the brains and the intellect of human beings. So you've got to get used to God using people. You've got to get used to God sending some person to serve as your deliverer. When God got ready to deliver the children of Israel, he didn't come down himself. He didn't even send Michael, the archangel, nor did he send Gabriel, the angel. When God got ready to deliver the children of Israel up under the rule of Pharaoh and the Egyptians, he sent a man by the name of Moses a natural man, a common man, a man who's just like you and me, but God anointed him and ordained him and sent him into that city or into that country and he started decreeing the word of the Lord and they were able to set the captives free because God, when he sends an answer, he sends it through a man or a woman. But your calling is an answer. Your calling is an answer. It's hard for me to even get off of that point, but I want you to see that, that you have answers in you. You have an anointing on your life that will serve as an answer for many things that are going on around you. But we don't know that. We don't always understand that. Because when God calls us, one of the first things we do is, is we second guess ourselves. One of the first things we do is we start trying to talk ourselves out of it. How can it be me? Do you not know in the passage that we just read when God got ready to speak to Moses about setting the children of Israel free? One of the first things Moses says, he says, who am I? <laughs> who am I to, to, to go down and tell Pharaoh to let these people go? I'm just a man. I'm just, I'm just a nobody. But you are not just a nobody. You have been ordained by God. You have been chosen by the living God. You are anointed for such a time as this. God has given you his grace and his mercy and his power regardless of where you are in life to set some people free. You've got to get away from the doubts and the fears and the second guessing of yourself when God calls you. Let me check the room. Is there anybody in here that can sense that God is calling you, maybe even in a new way, that he's calling you higher, that he's calling you deeper, that he's calling you to his presence, that he is calling you to his word like never before, that he is calling you to a particular group of people or to a particular city or to a particular situation, but you can discern the calling of God on your life. Some of you have known since you were a child that there's something about you. Some of you have known since you were five that God has something for your life and now at 50 or 40, you can still hear the voice of God calling you and wooing you into what he has for your life. It's the call of God. Your calling is an answer. Another thing I want you to understand that when God calls you, you have to heed to the call. You have to answer the call. Sometimes you will become, not sometimes, but always you will become spiritually frustrated when God is calling you to something and you haven't answered. 
you will always feel like something is missing when you have not heed, heeded to the call when you have not picked up the telephone to say yes God I will do this and some of you, you're still trying to find your purpose and your destiny in life by seeking after other things that God really didn't call you to do. And the reason being is because you must realize that when God calls you, you have to answer, you have to respond because when you start going at things in your own spirit, it brings more calamity. It brings more frustration. You will go after something that God never told you to go after. It brings more crisis. It brings more pain into your life. It is only until you heed to the call, answer the call, where you finally throw up your hands and say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I'm tired of running from you. And I don't care who you are in this place and I don't care who's watching me right now. I know that I am talking to somebody who is running from God. There's always somebody that is running from God that is trying to run the other way. And God is saying, I don't need you to run away from me. I need you to run to me because the plans I have for your life are greater than your own. Tell your neighbor, run to God. This is one of the things that I've counseled people about that, that every time you get into a crisis or one of the things that happens when you get into a crisis or when bad things happen, one of the natural things to do is to isolate yourself and, and, and get away from the church and get away from people. But I want you to understand that when you do that, it opens up a door for the enemy to come in and torment your mind. He works to isolate you so that he can have you out there all by yourself and so that he can inject you with all kind of fiery darts and insult you and antagonize you with all kind of negative thoughts and all kind of negative feelings and emotions so that he can steal the praise out of your life. But God wants you to run to the house of God when you get in trouble. He wants you to run to the altar when you feel like you're, you're, you're beneath the situation that is going on in your life. He wants you to run to his presence, not away from his presence, because the more you come to him, the stronger you become the more faith begins to arise in your heart, the more you keep talking to him, the more you keep coming to church even though you didn't feel like it. God sends the very word that you needed because you push past your flesh, your flesh and you push past your emotions and you push past your doubts and fears and God sent you the word that you needed. Touch your neighbor and tell him I'm glad I made it here. Yeah, I'm glad I made it here. The enemy tried to attack me. The enemy tried to block me. Something came up. There, were, there was some bad news, but I came here anyway. But you have to heed to the call. You have to answer the call. You have to sign the dotted line in the realm of the spirit. You have to do as Isaiah declared, Lord, here I am, send me. Are you listening to me? Because the world is not just gonna change through the power of God alone. God is looking to work through human vessels. We haven't really grasped that understanding that God is looking to work through human vessels. But in order for that to happen, you have to answer the call. You have to answer the call. You keep wondering, why am I frustrated? It's, it could be because you haven't answered the call. I keep trying this over here and I keep trying this over there and, and I have no satisfaction. I still have no sense of fulfillment it could be because there's a calling on your life and you haven't answered the call. You haven't heeded the call. You may be working in other industries. You may be doing other things, but you still have no sense of satiety or happiness because God is waiting on you to answer the call. Nudge your neighbor and tell him, pick up the phone. 
Yeah, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Heaven is calling you. I want you to understand that when Moses realized that he had been called by an all-wise God, and after he wrestled within himself concerning that call, I want you to understand that Moses had to realize that God was not intimidated by his weaknesses. God was not intimidated by Moses' weaknesses. He was not concerned about Moses' insecurities because God knew Moses' insecurities before he called him. See, you keep telling God what you can't do. You keep telling God and trying to convince God that you're not the one and that you're really not qualified to do what he is calling you to do. And you keep uh, bringing up to God all of these insecurities that are on the inside of you and God is standing there saying, yeah, but I've still called you. And he's also, also standing there saying, yeah, I know all about it. That's why I called you. I want you to know that you don't have to be perfect. Oh God, you've got to hear me. You don't have to be perfect in order for God to use you. Because the only one that's ever been perfect according to my Bible is Jesus himself. But you can look at Abraham and Abraham wasn't perfect and he is considered the father of faith. I know he wasn't perfect because he lied to uh, Pharaoh and said that Sarah was his sister when she was his wife. Moses killed a man later on in his story. You've got to understand that even the apostle Paul before he was converted was a murderer of Christians and God still had a calling for his life. God still had anointed him to do something great. I want you to know that God is not intimidated by your weaknesses. You won't heed to the call if you keep focusing on what you cannot do. I understand this even in my own life. When God first called me to preach when I was about 16 years old, it scared me to death. It scared me to death. When, when I started getting visions and dreams of him using me, preaching to people, for, first of all, I didn't even understand it. And it took me a little while to process it. And it was only until I began to speak with some more seasoned pastors and ministers that I realized and received the confirmation that God was calling me as a preacher of the gospel. But when he first started dealing with me, I gave God all kind of excuses as to why I could not do what I'm doing today. I said, number one, I said, I'm too young and I don't want to do that because my dream was to play professional basketball and that was my focus, that was my aim and I was busy working at it day and night. And yet God had another calling for my life but I kept giving him excuses as to why I'm not the one. I said, I don't know enough. I'm not educated enough. I don't know any preachers in my family. I was giving him all kind of excuses and God was not intimidated by them at all. The calling never went away. For three years, I tried to ignore it. For three years, I could hear his voice and I wouldn't answer. See, I've been you. I, I know what I'm talking about. For three years, I tried to tune him out. For three years, I thought I was losing my mind. For three years, I felt divided within myself. For three years, I tried to act as if I had not heard what I heard. And God was still saying, you're the one. Touch everybody around you and tell them you're the one. 
Oh, y'all, oh, you've got to hear me. You're the one. 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 Tell them again. You're the one. You're the one. You've been looking around you, and you're the one. You've been looking for somebody else to come to the forefront, and you are the one. You've been looking for answers in other places, and God is saying, you are the one. You are the one. Since you were conceived in your mother's womb, you are the one stop running stop making excuses stop trying to get out of it God's hand is on your life and there's not even anything you can do about it if you're blessed you're just blessed if you're called you're just called if you're anointed you're just anointed and if you're a preacher of the gospel you're just a preacher of the gospel and you've got to move into what God is calling you to do tell your neighbor again you are the one yeah, you are the one. You are the one to change everything. You are the one to change the landscape. You are the one to make a difference. You are the one to bring, bring forth transformation. You are the one to change the entire culture. You are the one to change the industry. You are the one to bring Satan's kingdom down. You are the one to upset tradition. You are the one to bring liberation. You are the one to bring in new ideas and new concepts somebody give God a praise if you know you're the one oh my God y'all are too quiet in here for me you ought to give God a praise because you are the one I mean at 60 you are the one at 40 you are the one at 20 you are the one you've got to give God a praise for what's about to happen in your life everything you've been through has a purpose and God is getting ready to use it for his name's sake and for the advancement of his kingdom that's why the enemy has been fighting you the way he's been fighting you because you're the one you're the one. You're the one. You've been trying to push everybody else ahead of you. And you are the one. I'm going to get down there and look at you. You are the one. You are the one. You are the one. It's you. It's you. It's you. That's why God brought you here. Because it's you. You're the one he chose out of your family. It's you. It's you. It's you. You've been saying I'm the black sheep because you're the one. Hallelujah. They tried to kill you, but they couldn't because you're the one. They tried to work all kind of witchcraft on you, but you survived it because you're the one. They talked about you. They criticized you. They tried to pull you down, but you still here because you're the one all hell came against you but you live to tell your story because you are the one the enemy sent all kind of devices to kill the purpose of God in your life but you are the one somebody holler I'm the one Oh, if you don't say it, it won't happen. If you don't say it, it won't manifest. If you don't speak it out, it won't come into fruition. Touch somebody around you and tell them I am the one. I am the one. I am the one. I'm not Deborah. I'm the first me that you've ever seen. I'm not Paul. I'm the first me that you've ever seen. I am the one chosen before the foundation of the world. Chosen in eternity. Chosen before time. Chosen before there was a wind or a wear. Chosen before the wind began to blow. He chose me for such a time as this. I came here looking for you. I came here to point you out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Even when Jesus came on the scene, John the Baptist pointed him out and said, hear ye him. He is the one. I must decrease as he increases. I must go out as he comes in. I must exit as he enters because you are the one. Am I in the right place today? Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor and tell him, get ready for what's about to happen in your life. Get ready, get ready, get ready. 
get ready for what's coming into your life. God's about to open up doors for you. God's about to open up opportunities for you to do exactly what you were born to do. God's about to pour out a blessing over your life that you have never even dreamed of. That's why you're still here and you're still alive and you're still awakened and you're still moving in the power of the Holy Ghost because you are the one. Moses had to realize that he was the one. Even though in his heart and in his flesh, he didn't want to receive it. It was difficult for him to embrace it. But he had to reconcile it in his own heart and in his own spirit that God is not going to change his mind. Some of you, you've been fighting your own calling and your own destiny because in your flesh you've been wishing secretly that God would change his mind. And I, I came here today to tell you he won't change his mind. You're still the one. That's why that dream keeps coming up in your heart. That's why the vision won't leave you alone. That's why you lay up in the bed at night and you keep thinking about how your life could be and how it could be and how it should be and what we could have and, and how things could change because you are the one and I understand it's a frightening thing. It's an overwhelming feeling because with that calling comes great responsibility and it comes great accountability starting with God whom you cannot see but you hear him speaking into your heart, speaking into your spirit. You've got something to do. Greatness is in you. Power lies in you. Hidden anointings are down in your heart. You have been chosen. You have been called out of the crowd. That's why you feel isolated. That's why it's hard for you to fit in anywhere. Sometimes even around the saints, it can be hard to fit in when, when God has called you to do something great. You can be around the church folks and still feel out of place and dysfunctional and out of sorts because the calling on your life can be so massive. It's hard for you to fit in because you don't think and you don't process like most people do. And you feel alone. It's because you're the one. It's because you're the one because you can't lead them if you are them. Amen. And God has to set you apart. But the Lord told me to tell you if you're going to walk in the calling, the real calling of your life, you have to change the story or the narrative that you've been telling yourself. You have to change the story or the narrative that you've been telling yourself all your life. How can I do this when I came from that place? How can I be this when I don't have the proper education? When I don't have the right pedigree when I, when I wasn't raised in a church, I had somebody tell me that one time. They said, well, I've never been in church. I said, you're, I said, you're just right for the job. They said, I don't know anything about scriptures. I don't know anything about the Old or the New Testament. In fact, they thought the Old Testament was the New Testament and the New Testament was the Old Testament. And I said, you're, you're the right one. 
because God needs some people that he can mold himself. He needs some people that he can just put his spirit inside of them and just speak to them clearly without having to deliver them from old traditional ways of thinking and old religious belief systems and you can just get it fresh from the Holy Spirit. God needs you to change the narrative that keeps running in your mind because of where you've come from. Tell your neighbor, change the story. Change the story. Change, change the story. Break the pattern. Stop telling yourself you cannot do something. Change the tape. Break the pattern of thinking in your spirit and understand that you can do it. You can be it. You can achieve it because you are the one. You've got to change that negative programming within yourself. That you didn't hear what I just said. Change the negative programming that you keep rehearsing within yourself. Stop belittling yourself. Stop seeing yourself as incapable, as not having enough, as feeling unworthy. I'm not worthy for this. How, how could this happen to me? How, how could he use me that way? How could I be blessed that way? How, how can I speak to those people? How? Me, me, I'm just little old me. Why, how can it be me? It is you. Change the narrative. Start telling yourself it is me. I can do it. I'm going to tell you how you can do it. I'm going to tell you, it's right there in the scripture. It's right there in the passage of scripture we, we read. God told Moses, he said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. That's how you're going to know that you are the one. Because whatever you're about to do, you will not do it by yourself. God said, I'm going to be with you. You will not go into that situation alone. You will not go at that situation all by yourself. God promised you that his presence and his anointing will be with you and that regardless of what obstacles you face, he will be there to fight the battles for you. You are getting ready to mount up with wings as eagles. You are getting ready to run through troops and leap over walls. You are getting ready to run like you've never run before. I'm prophesying to somebody in this place. And the Lord told me to tell you the way you're going to succeed is for you to understand you're not in this all by yourself. So when the enemy comes up against you, he's not going to come up against you. He's going to come up against the God of your salvation because God wants you to know that I am with you right there in the midst of the storm right there in the midst of the obstacles the hiccups the setbacks and I'm still gonna see you through I'm still gonna bless you like I promise I'm still going to use you in ways unknown I'm still going to blow your mind I'm still going to prosper you I'm still going to anoint you like you've never been anointed I'm still going to slay your giants because I am in the storm with you. You're going to bring Pharaoh's kingdom down because I'm with you. You're going to change that industry because God's blessing will be on your life. 
You're going to turn that situation around because his favor will rest on you. His anointing will increase in your spirit and it's going to bring, up, bring about radical deliverance. I'm talking to somebody. I can feel it. When Moses delivered the children of Israel, it was a radical deliverance. It was something they had never seen. It, there were miracles in their midst. God parted the Red Sea. This had never been done, never been seen, never been experienced. And he used a rod that was in Moses' hand to deliver the children of Israel. Over two million people. And he's getting ready to use you. Will you stand to your feet? He's getting ready to anoint you afresh. He's, I, I believe this word so much in my heart and in my spirit. If nobody in here receives what I'm saying, I receive it myself. I receive it for my own life. I'm here to tell you prophetically that your life is getting ready to change for the good. You can no longer afford to just come to church out of routine just because it's Sunday. You've got to start coming to church to get a word to fuel the calling of God that is on your life. You've, you've got to come to church with the mindset that I need a word to strengthen me for where I'm going. To strengthen me for what, what God is about to do through me and through us. A change is coming. A change is coming. A deliverance is coming. I tell you by the Spirit of God, God has been listening to the hurts and cries of people all over the world. And that's why he's raising you up. That's why he's calling you to his presence like never before. He's calling you in a new and fresh way. But you've got to believe in yourself. I am the one. I am the one. I'm not talking about being arrogant or boastful. I'm talking about you simply coming into agreement with what the Lord said about you. You coming into divine alignment with the kingdom of God and allowing his divine purpose to work through you. Reach over and grab your neighbor by the hand. There's an anointing in this place to shift your entire life. This is a life transforming word for somebody. You've been waiting in the wings. You've been hiding in the shadows. You've just been sitting back and waiting for something to happen and God is calling you out and he's calling you to what he ordained before the foundation of the world. Before you die, there's something you will do. There's a blessing you will release there's an impartation that will come forth out of your life. Squeeze that hand a little bit because the one you're holding is the one. The one you're holding is the one I'm preaching to. You're the one. Moses, believe that it's you. That it's you. I know you were too Hebrew to be Hebrew. You were too Hebrew to be Egyptian and you were too Egyptian to be Hebrew. But you're the one. You're the one. I deliver you from your comfort zone. From a place of familiarity. God is setting you free. Father, I pray right now a strong anointing over these people, over these precious sheep that you have called into the fold to 
usher in the greatest move of God that we've ever known, that we've ever seen. I pray that each one will heed to the calling, the specific calling that you have upon their lives, even those watching me over the internet. I pray that you will heed to the call on your life. God is calling you right now. Some of you, he's calling you back to church, calling you back to alignment, calling you to get into agreement with what his plans are for your life. You've run enough. You've gone the other direction long enough. God is calling you to him to serve his kingdom. In Jesus' name. 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 name. If you're ready to receive your calling in Jesus' name, I want you to loose those hands and give God praise in this house. Come on now. Only if you're ready. Only if you're going to heed to the call. If you're not going to heed to the call, put those hands down. But if you're going to heed to the call, If you're going to say, Father, here I am. I'm listening this time. I'm coming to you this time. I'm walking toward your presence, your voice. I know you have something for me. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Heed the call. Know that you're the one. You're the one. You don't think like them. You may look like them, but you don't think like them. You don't process process like them. You don't envision like them because you're the one. You're the one. You don't talk like them because you're the one. You don't see it like they see it because you're the one. Believe in what he gave you and what's in you. What's in your spirit, what's in your heart, what's in your mind because he gave it to you. Glory, 